folks, it's Teresa over here at Stringfield Ridge Farm. Uh, I haven't done a Saturday vlog in a little bit, so I decided to do a Saturday vlog. Uh, it's going to come up a day late because I went to the Waterfowl Festival. And uh, so I taped some stuff later, but I wanted to get the Waterfowl Festival video up first. So uh, you can watch that video. Look for that uh, BBTC Waterfowl Festival video and watch that. And uh, that's what I done on Saturday. And I done some other things on Saturday, but I, like I said, I wanted to get the uh, Waterfowl Festival video up first. So uh, I'm gonna show you some other things that we've been doing. Um, some things we've been up to and a quail update. And I wanna show you my new t-shirts. Uh, I got a couple of them and I got Lee one. And mostly we got them because we are going to be going to the there we go we are going to be going to the wycliffe mounds that lee got invited to to be a demonstrator and he's going to be doing flint napping and and showing some of his crafty work and uh, so i thought we needed some of our t-shirts to represent our uh channel and our uh, farm and so i went and had these made up and uh, i got me a green one and a blue one and I'm just showing these off to you. I got a green one and a blue one, and uh, Lee got a black one. And uh, we may get a few more, and uh, don't know that we'll sell them. Maybe eventually, someday in the future, if our channel grows, maybe we would sell them. But uh, for right now, we just got us some to wear to uh, represent our channel and our, and our farm and everything. And we've got business cards we're gonna pass out that tells a little bit about our farm and uh, has our channel name and everything on it. So, uh, so we're gonna be up there representing our farm too at the same time while we're uh, demonstrating some of his Native American crafty work that he does. And uh, so uh, watch this video and you'll see some of the things we've been up to and a quail update. And y'all be sure at the end you like, comment, and subscribe. So that's our kraut that I showed uh, in my last video, uh, showed making uh, homemade sauerkraut. And I just opened uh, both uh, two jars of that. Uh, I also put uh, something in there. I want to show you what that is. And uh, there's my sauerkraut. It is done. It is smelling delicious. And we're having that for supper and then taking it for lunches for a couple of days. That's why I made a big old pot for just us two because we can uh, have that tonight, maybe tomorrow night even, and then take it for lunches for several days. So uh, that's what I'm doing there. And I will show you what I put in there, the meat that I have put in there. So I used to just grab the Polish sausage and um, sometimes you can find that pretty cheap. Uh, but this I wanted, I'm trying to eat healthier and I'm on a diet and uh, tr also trying to eat healthier foods. So uh, when I decided to uh, make the sauerkraut, I had seen this. This is one reason I went ahead and made so homemade sauerkraut again is because I found this meat. It is uncured beef sausage. It is no artificial ingredients, no artificial preservatives, no added MSG, no nitrates or nitrates added. So, um, not preserved, keep refrigerated below 40 degrees at all times. This is a whole lot better meat than what I was getting before. And it wasn't a whole lot higher. I think um, sometimes I found uh, Polish sausage on sale for like um, $1.99. And I think this was $2.50. So, not a whole lot higher for the uh, benefit of it. I would like to can some. So, I may can this next batch if it's enough of it. If I got enough of it, uh, you only have to water bath can. Uh, you can water bath can sauerkraut. And uh, that is 15 minutes for pints and 20 minutes for quarts. 
So if I have enough pints to, uh, to split that up and do a water bath canning, I'll do that and then just save this in the freezer. I have this in the freezer. So I'll just save this in the freezer and probably uh, try to water bath can my um, other sauerkraut that I've got going back there. And then maybe get pick, uh, pick up a few more of these when I get a chance and that way we can have this good meal. So uh, we're gonna taste that in a minute and let you know how good that is. Cause I've never had this before in it. So I'm fixing to uh, let that cook down a little and then I'll do a little taste test for you. So there we go. There is a delicious bowl of homemade sauerkraut with uh, beef sausage. So I'm fixing to try the beef sausage for the first time. Mmm, that's good. It's quite different than the Polish sausage. That's delicious. Y'all have to try this. I'm going to give you a little update on my dehydrator. I've been using the heck out of it. For the most part, I've only used about four uh, trays. Thanks to one of my subscribers, I have eight trays now. Um, yes, I showed a video on that a while back. But I have been using it a lot. I just... Um, I haven't used a whole lot at a time. I just haven't had that much stuff at one time to, to utilize it with, but I know that I will. Um, I'll probably have all eight going before it's over. But right now I've had about four going at one time. And I just wanted to show you that I, I'm really enjoying the dehydrator very, very much. And uh, I'll show you what I've got going today. I have just put these on the little uh, cherry tomatoes cut in halves. I've got uh, eggshells that I'm going to be making uh, calcium with. Um, I'll dehydrate those and then grind those down real uh, tiny into a powder and make uh, calcium that I can put in my smoothies. Um, and then onions. The next two trays are both onions. I'm going to dehydrate down the onions and then chop those up real small. Um, not to a powder, we like them kind of uh, chunky like uh, flakes, like uh, onion flakes. And uh, we done that last year and used them up so fast that we wanted to grow a whole lot more onions this year to have more and then that didn't happen because of the weather and the horse and all that that happened to our garden. Uh, but I wanna show you what I really love that my subscriber sent me with this let me get my top back on there. Um, these, my dehydrator, as you've probably seen in a video, um, I got it used, but it had only been used a couple of times, and I got it on one of those barter and trade sites for $15, and it's a really nice one. And I got that for $15 with three trays. And then a subscriber sent me um, more trays and these. And I love these things to put in there so that stuff doesn't drip through or get through. I especially liked them. Uh, I dehydrated my um, elderberries, and these were great for that. But I've used them for everything just so that, you know, whatever uh, seeds and things don't fall down through there. So I've used the heck out of those two. Okay, go down um, on your dehydrator. See, here's one on my dehydrator. It keeps small stuff from falling through. So everything that's in here, I've, I've got uh, one of these under just to keep any small pieces from falling through or seeds or whatever. So thank you once again, Living and Learning Life, for sending these. So there's the um, quail that I hatched out not long ago. There's four of those in there. They're all the jumbo white quail. There's four of those. I've got them in a tote with a screen on it and still got their um, uh, heat light on there. And then I just hatched out a new little uh, button quail. So they're so little, I had to keep them in a separate thing. So I have a wire on top of it and have it up closer to the heat lamp. And uh, so I've got those all separated. There's four jumbo whites. They'll be moving out with the bigger ones pretty soon. 
So here's also a quick little update on the big on the quail, the big quail out in the uh, cage that Lee made. And there's the uh, the original ones are the two white ones. They are white jumbo quail. And then out of those we got some of these others. She is beautiful. I think they're all females except for the one the one male. But they are doing good in here. I've given them um, places to hide out. They've got driftwood. I've got a bucket that's got a hole. I'll show you what I've done. I'll turn it around for a minute. I just took an ice cream bucket and cut a hole in there. That gives them a place to hide in and they lay their eggs in there. I've also got this bucket that's just a, a um, baby milk, infant milk carton. Yep, they've laid some in there. I just put some stuffing in there, some um, bedding in there. I put some old grass in there out of the yard. And I made them a bucket for uh, sand, which I need to fill up. They've wallowed that down. I need to fill that up. But that was just made out of the bottom of ice cream bucket. So uh, I need to fill that up. So I just put that sand in there and he is going to town on it. That's the male in there right now. But they all get in there and love it. They'll crowd up all in there at the same time sometimes. And they will just get them a dust bath. And then I've still got a few eggs going in the incubator. Uh, this is the last bunch I'm going to do because it's going to get cold weather soon. And I don't want to deal with that during cold weather. So I've got more eggs in there. And I done, went ahead and done some uh, uh, chicken eggs too. After all those hatch out, I'm done. I'm not going to hatch out anymore um, till spring. I have a last minute update. I have um, chickens hatching out in the incubator. So those will be done soon. And uh, there's uh, four already hatching out. There's six eggs in there, but there's four of the chickens that are that are actually starting to peck through there. And this one is already fluffy. And then there's another little one. Let's see if I can find him for you. There, he's just hatched out. He's not fluffy yet. And then two of the eggs over here on this side are starting to poke through and break through. So... I'll have chickens and quails hatched out soon, and then I'm going to be done with the incubator for the winter. So thanks for watching, y'all. We'll keep you updated on the chickens and the quail.